Hello and welcome to this unit. In this unit, we're going to be looking at a few more directives that come with Angular. We're also going to be looking at some module-related concepts, and we're going to wrap this up by building a to-do app as promised. So we're going to start by looking at a few more directives. Uh, we, we're obviously not going to be covering every directive that comes up with Angular. Uh, that's going to be a big list, and it's not in scope for this course. I am going to be covering a few directives that are fairly common in usage, and I consider them to be the important ones. Uh, I'm going to start off with the ng-show and the ng-hide directives. In order to demonstrate this, I have created this folder called more-directives, which again has the same structure that we have seen before. It's a simple Angular application with an app called the more-directives app, and I have an app.js where I initialize the module more-directives app and I have the Angular and app.js linked, the same structure that we have seen all along. Now I'm going to create a controller here, div more directives controller as ctrl, and this is the div where I'm going to be adding all my HTML content. I will of course have to create this controller over here in app.js, Here's a handy shortcut, I, and some people do this. Instead of doing an app.controller, what we can do is, instead of holding on to this in a variable, I'm just gonna do something like this, dot controller. You see what I'm doing here? Rather than have angular.module return an app object, which I'm gonna hold on to in a variable, and then do a variable dot, I'm basically gonna do angular.module.controller. So this dot controller is basically executing on the return of angular.module, which is what we did earlier as well. So I'm gonna be doing a controller called mode directives controller. Well, it's really more directives. That's a typo. Okay, now I can create this function. And I'm just going to leave this as an empty function for now. I'm going to go to index.html. I'll have a checkbox here and a small paragraph. So I'm going to have an input type equals checkbox. And I'm going to drive an ng model equals checked. I have ctrl.checked. So this is going to be my checkbox. And then I'm going to have a paragraph here. It says show some content. All right, now if I refresh, so I have this checkbox and I have some content over here. We know that this checkbox, since it's tied to the ng model, when I check this checkbox, it's going to have the scope is going to have a checked property that's going to tie in with the content of the checkbox. If it's checked, that property is going to be true. If it's not checked, the property is going to be false. Okay. Now, what if I want to have this conditionally show or not show, depending on whether it's being checked or not? I can do something as simple as this: ng dash if equals ctrl dot checked. We have already seen this. ng if is a way to add the element to the DOM or remove the element from the DOM. So if I were to refresh this, it's the checkbox is not checked, so the content doesn't show up. The minute I check this, the content still doesn't show up, which means that something is wrong. Let's look at the console. Well, there you go, that's the error. I fixed the typo in the controller, but not in the HTML. I had given the wrong name for the controller. All right, let's refresh this one more time. You see here, when I check the checkbox, the content shows up, and when I uncheck it, the content doesn't show up. So this is fairly straightforward. What I'm doing is either showing or hiding the content depending on a Boolean. So this is fine. But there are a couple more directives that look similar but do something a little bit different. So the directives are ng-show and ng-hide. ng-show lets you show an element depending on a Boolean. So if I were to do this, instead of doing an ng-if, if I were to do an ng-show, refresh the page, same behavior, right? 
So you might be wondering why I have these two directives. But before I get there, let me also show you ng-hide. What if you want to reverse this thing? You want to hide a particular element if the, if the value is Boolean. For instance, if you were to uh, uncheck this, the content shows up. If you check it, the content doesn't show up. In order to do that, I would do ng-hide, which is actually a negation of ng-show, right? It does the opposite of ng-show. If I were to use ng-hide, see the checkbox is unchecked, the content shows up, but then I check it, the content is hidden, all right? So these are the three directives that you could potentially use to show or hide certain things depending on a Boolean. There is ng-show, ng-hide, and ng-if. And of course, all these things uh, take the negation as well. So if I were to say not of control that checked, Basically, what I'm doing is same as ng show, all right? Uh, let's show this one more time. Refresh. See, behaves just like ng show. So, they are in a way convenience uh, directives. But why have these many? The difference lies in the fact that ng show and ng hide work a bit differently when compared to ng if. So here's what happens when you use ng if. I'm gonna change this to ng if. Refresh the page. All right. I'm going to open the console, the browser console. I'm going to check this and I'm going to inspect element till I get to this paragraph. So you see here, there is a paragraph over here, like we would expect it to. But notice what happens when I uncheck this. The paragraph goes away, right? So that's what happens when you use ng if. I kind of stressed that earlier and I want to stress that again. When you use ng if and the condition evaluates to false, Angular removes that element from the DOM. It literally removes it, it yanks it out, okay? And when you, when the condition becomes true, Angular puts that element back into the DOM. Now notice what happens when I use ng show. Refresh the page. The behavior is the same, but notice what happens. I'm gonna do inspector. So this element still shows up, but when I uncheck it, you notice the element is still there. It's not gone, but there is a class called ng-hide added to that element. And what does ng-hide do? ng-hide has a CSS property called display none import, which is basically a CSS property to hide a particular element. You can have the CSS display colon none on any element and it essentially hides it. There is of course the important here to make sure that no other style or no other CSS rules overrides this. But essentially what this does is set a class called ng-hide to an element and that class has a styling which hides that element, all right? This is what ng-show does. And ng-hide also does something similar, and it's the other way around. Uh, when the Boolean is true is when it's hidden. Again, you see here, ng-hide is the class that's added. So this is the big difference. You essentially have three directives here. ng-if, which either adds the element to the DOM or removes the element from the DOM depending on a Boolean condition. And then you have the ng-show and the ng-hide directives, which are complement, complements of each other, uh, which don't remove the element from the DOM or add it to the DOM. Instead, it adds a class which shows or hides the element based on CSS rules. Now that you know the difference, the obvious question is, why do we still need that one, one suffice? Well, the reason we need two, and also the reason why you would want to use one over another, is whether you want to actually temporarily show or hide the element, or you want to completely remove the element from the DOM. If you know when loading the page that you don't need that element depending on user data, you would use ng-if because it literally yanks the element from the DOM. However, if you might potentially need the element later depending on user action, you might show an element for a little bit and then remove it, like you know, validation messages, right? So you're uh, in validating the user password. You wanna make sure that the right password is entered. So the message comes below the password and it's very likely that you're gonna show it. So for such situations, you use ng-show or ng-hide, which doesn't literally remove the element from the DOM, it just shows or hides it. So it makes it a little bit faster to show or hide. So if during the life cycle of the app, you have reasons to show or hide an element, you use ng-show or ng-hide. However, if you know for sure that in the life cycle of an app, once you remove an element, it is gonna stay removed and you won't likely add it back, you use ng-if. So that's a, a pretty good rule of thumb 
for deciding which one to use, but they are very similar directors and you can actually get away with using one instead of another. 